got an overheating problem. Yes. So we're going to diagnose this today and try to figure out what's going on with it. And what what is it? UTV side by side? What the heck so is we it? Got a side by side four seater. Or actually, put six on this one. Kawasaki Mule 3010 diesel. Uh huh. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna basically we're gonna check the belt. We're going to uh, Outer. check the radiator and make sure the water's actually going through. Make sure the radiator's topped off. And then from there, you know, we're gonna keep on going. If we gotta check the thermostat, water pump, whatever we gotta do. So. All right. So what are we gonna start with? Well, we're gonna fire it up, get it to operating temperature with the cap off. Uh huh. So you're gonna take the radiator cap off. You're gonna let it warm up a bit. And you're gonna look for flow in the in the radiator. Alrighty. And so we got the radiator on the front of this. Whoop. Nice easy access here. Yes, right there. <laughs> And why do you take the cap off again, Ian? What, what's the... Well, I want to see if the water flows through, and that's going to tell me, basically, um, if the thermostat's opening and closing. And what are you looking at? I just noticed you look at something there. I got a little gunk here, so... Well, that is... a good idea to flush this system out while we're in here doing all this. Yeah, but say exactly what you found that, that they should be concerned about. Some kind of contaminants in the coolant here. That's what it looks so it's like. like some yellow, creamy something that's in the yeah. coolant. So that is a good sign to, to, to clean the coolant out or flush it out. Huh? Exactly. Is it, does that mean anything else? I know sometimes when you have creamy oil in the in the engine that you have a head gasket issue. Yeah, we are going to check the oil as well. So yeah, we'll be pretty thorough today. All righty. So there's the first thing that we've discovered. We've got some gook in the coolant and we need to flush that. And as you go through this, there'll be tattletale signs about all of it. The things that you should be doing as you go through to really properly diagnose every aspect of it, right? Right, and uh, oh, on our next video, we're gonna be uh, diagnosing some uh, improperly installed LED lights. Oh, those are getting bad too. It's getting a lot of moisture in their condensation. So cheap LEDs are not always good LEDs I'm by themselves. So Ian's going to check some electrical and grounding issues and switch issues and see if we can't get that resolved. So, watch your hand because it will pinch it fast. How do I know that? From experience. Good. One thing I could tell you, you know, I'm anal. Every two rides or so, I change oil because it's only like three quarts of oil, you know. I'm like, I'm like, just change it. I don't might not change a filter every time, you know, maybe every other time, but I change oil just about every other. So as you're talking out loud, what are you what are you thinking or what are you looking for? Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh... Belt. Let's see what we've got going on here. Make sure that it's properly tensioned. Yeah, that's a good call there too. So Ian just said he's going to check the tensioning because the belt was the last thing that we did on this when it was overheating the last time it went out. So he's just saying, well, it's possible that the belt is not tensioned properly, and that would make it so the water pump doesn't work, or not efficiently, anyways. One of the other things, I don't know how to test it in, but I've seen that this little switch right here that comes off the back of that water pump is they replace a lot of those. They sell more of those on Amazon. Like it makes a, I mean, you know, whenever they sell a lot of one kind of part, I'm like, huh, there must be a reason they're selling so many of those kind of parts. Aftermarket, OEM. So I don't know what that does. Do you know what that does? It's usually it's going to be, you know, for the sensor telling you that it's overheating. Okay, now. See a little bit. 
bit of a mouth movement there, and I could feel it with my finger when the motor, when the, when the engine was off. So I want to get a little bit uh, more tension on there to see if that helps. So I'm going to go ahead and jump underneath there. There's one bolt under this side, and then there's one on this side holding it. And uh, grab my gear wrench, 10 millimeter, I get under there and get those loose. Alrighty. Go from there. So there's one bolt on the bottom of the fan belt shroud, and he's loosening that up now. I think it's a 10 millimeter. Nice metal cover here that keeps you know dirt and debris and junk from getting in there. Uh huh. All right, so we got that guy, and then let's get in here and get this guy off. Wasn't that bad. Alright. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Ah. This last one, I got my snap on ratchet. These things are torquey. I love this thing. Yeah, they are. Snap on hard sockets. If you can get access and use it, I love it. Great for taking things off, but not for putting them back on, though. Correct. You always want to hand tighten them. Bolting something on, especially motors and aluminum. Like and again, we're doing this because the fan belt's loose, and we figured uh, if the fan belt's loose, maybe it's loose enough that it's not uh, giving enough tension to the water pump to cause enough circulation to keep the engine cool. And I found another one under here hidden. So there's another 10 millimeter right under here. I'm going to go get an extension. Okay. And then... All right, so we got the other ones off. The 10 millimeter guy, I have a deep well socket to get in there to get this guy. That's the bracket right above the alternator. And we are free. So. Make sure you have your spill. All right, so we got the fan cover off. We've got this loose. Now the fan does have to come off to take this off till we can get to the tensioner, which is on the alternator, to tighten the belt. So. Access to see our belt, which has a lot wow, of play. Wow, that is a lot of play. And uh, an alternator, which that is what tensions it. So I think that's our issue. All right, so we found <laughs> this bolt underneath the alternator was loose. As I'm turning it with my hand. And so it was hand loose. And that's that's way too much slop in the belt. The belt doesn't look trashed, but you know it's it's Except definitely been hitting the uh, cover. You can see the, the line there. But, <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna loosen this up. Loosen up the alternator. The alternator bracket. To where we can see now, 
see how the alternator moves. Uh -huh. So our goal is to get some tension here. Some good and, tension, and yeah. get that belt to where it just moves just a little bit. You don't want too much movement. Check the camera. Right. Okay, so I'm going to get in here and get on this bracket. We're not dealing with big heavy machinery, so you don't have to really get in here. They didn't even put a place to, you know, most like a pry place. Put it, yeah, like a lot of alternator brackets will have a place where you actually stick your ratchet in there and and give it a little oomph, but just. Just give it just get on the steel, pull it just a little bit, yeah. get it to where you can't. That's still you know, a little sloppy. It, you feel it just a little bit. You're always going to have some play in it. Which one looks like the bottom needs to come out on the alternator. You want to get this snug, but not tight. The, the bottom bolt on the alternator. Because that's where it pivots. Yep. You can see that the alternator's kind of tightening up there. Mm -hmm. So you still want to be able to move it a little bit. Alright, very good. I guess you want to be really careful too that you're on good solid part yes. of the motor and not some plastic part or a hose or something. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm on the steel bracket. Yep. All right, and that should that, get that, that sucker pretty, pretty nice and tight. Good? Yes. Now like, we'll how go back. tight? How tight do you think you? If you're telling people how tight to bake it, like what do you? You want to have just a little teeny tiny bit of movement. I mean, just a little bit because it's got to be able to give, but not so tight that it can't move at all. Right. And then not so loose that the belt's going to flop around and hit the cover, you know? Yeah, like it was. All right, so we're going to go back in and tighten the bottom bolt. Yep. And then we'll re-tighten the top. Pivot on the bottom of the alternator. And that was finger loose, right? Before? Uh, very, very loose. That is upsetting. So hopefully we found the problem right there. Just belt wasn't grabbing the water pump. That would make sense about everything that was wrong with this. You know, the, uh, you know, we just put a new belt on, so it can't be a belt. And then we're like, well, you know, the fluids were good when we checked the fluids. And, right. uh, and it only has, it was good. It was... only has 250 hours on it, so it shouldn't really need a pump yet. And we'll, we'll do a debrief at the end of this video. We'll talk about, like, you know, how to diagnose without taking everything apart or, you know, just try to figure out with common sense first what could be the potential issues and then what series that you would go about looking at this. Like, you notice we went to the radiator first. We checked the radiator. We pulled off the hose. We flushed out the air because we found sand, you know. Then you might go do the thermostat next, pull the thermostat out and let it heat up and see if you got water flow from the water pump. Is that all right, Ian? That's correct. And if you had no water flow after taking your thermostat out, uh, then you would know that it would be, most probably, be your water pump. Just go in reverse order and reinstall everything we took off. Is there a torque you put on those, or just... I just get them snug, and I, you know, with the snap-on wrench, you can just give it a little oomph, and it's the ratchet, mm -hmm. and just remember, you're you're bolting back onto aluminum, so don't... Don't, don't over-tighten. Don't hit it with electric, and yeah. don't over-tighten it, so... 
So you don't want to put bolts back on with the, with the electric wrench if you can help it, which you can. <laughs> I'm going to go back under here and put some more bolts on. Okay. Alright, so we just got done putting everything back on, double checking the bolts here. Everything's nice and tight. Belt's nice and tight. And we're just going to put this coolant hose back on and I'm really hoping it was the belt tension and you know get it all cleaned out and you know clean the radiator out and then we're gonna test run it and let it get to operating temperature and see what uh, she good. does. What's your confidence level? Zero to ten. Well Definitely could have been one of the problems, so I mean, I, I give it a 50-50 on that, but that was the most obvious, so we're going to go with the most obvious first. Yep. And obviously the cheapest too, which is always nice. That's always nice. So let's fire this baby up and let her run for a little bit. Let's double check the uh, fuel level. Let's put some water in there. Is that lower clamp on or no? Yeah. Don't really need it? It'll be alright, you know. Alright. Alright, we'll be back when it heats up and warms up. What are you working on? Uh, putting on all the little pieces that we took off, cleaned out. And right now we're watching the water level, waiting for the thermostat to open up. So when it opens up, it'll suck the water or the coolant through and we'll know that that's working so it's another thing to check but while we're waiting we're going to go ahead and put some stuff back together okay Let's go on the test run. 